However, you will be surprised to hear that there is a 7C in this video. You will miss out on the wonders of the wildlife world by skipping this video. This wild boar is very close to the hunter, and you can also see this big boar. But the hunter wasn't afraid of it. He had just timed it to shoot at it. This is a perfect shot. You better stay away from them because this species is very dangerous. However, this hunter seemed very pleased to meet such a large wild boar. He shot it straight in the head, which was the fatal shot that caused the boar to fall instantly. This pig is so big that it can fight off a pack of dogs that are attacking it. It looked really scary, and it stood firm on the ground until it had a chance to retreat. The dogs weren't its biggest problem, although while it was running away, a sniper shot it, and that's the thing for the boar. This pig is one of the largest to have been caught. So big that they had to use a tractor to move it. It weighed 682 kilo, and it was captured in South Sudan by a group of hunters and their dogs. They had to shoot a lot to kill this giant, and the fact that they had to use the tractor to move it speaks for itself. In this area, there was a large group of wild boars, but the hunters only targeted the largest of them, and they understood. They were glad they caught that boar. I looked up at one of the hilltops of the Turkish mountains. There were a lot of them. It's not an easy job, but their skills are top-notch. I feel happy for them. This is not a hunting clip, but it certainly deserves to be in today's video, given the size of this wild boar. I don't know how it got there, but I was stealing food from the trash when a man took out his phone and started recording. This wild boar is so large that it made local news headlines in Hong Kong as the largest wild boar ever discovered in China. This was a tense confrontation played out between a giant wild boar and a hunter who, despite the boar's size, remained standing and motionless. The wild boar eventually had to leave because it realized that the end result would not be in its favor. But in the end, the hunter shot it anyway. Did you notice that this wild boar is huge? It was so large that the hunter shot it at a very close range, and it was still able to run away from that position. The hunter aimed the second shot at its head, and they received their prize. However, this is still not the heaviest pig. This next pig is from Turkey. Can you think of a reason why it appears in this video? Comment below in the comment section. Before being caught, this pig attacked a lot of people, so the hunters decided to chase it. It's also pretty big, isn't it? Can you guess how much it weighs? Believe it or not, this is a pig weighing up to 700 kilo.
This hunter is about to shoot it with an arrow. I doubt why the hunter would pick one arrow when the bullets can't do much damage to them. As you have seen, after the hunter shot the arrow, the wild boar immediately ran away. However, it died down a short distance away. This hunter must have been a professional sniper to be able to defeat a large wild boar with just one arrow. In fact, this wild boar weighs less than 700 kilos. Right now, you will see how the hunter caught the 700 kilograms wild boar. In North Carolina, this man in the dark took down a giant wild boar. This incident went viral when the villagers saw the huge size of this wild boar. Have you ever seen this big wild boar? It needs a tractor to move. Wild boars appear in pretty much every place that we see them, but the giant pigs you just saw are very difficult to see. They will destroy crops and fields, so you have to watch out for them if you are a farmer. Have you ever faced a wild boar, and how did they behave? Comment on your story down below so we can share it with you. Wild boar, coyote, and white-tailed deer have always been considered the most damaging animals for agriculture and farmers in the United States. However, few people know that in recent decades, millions of wild bird species have also caused significant damage to farmers in this country, especially grain farmers. According to the USDA's 2021 report, the wild birds that cause the most damage to agriculture in the United States include rock pigeons, sparrows, and red-winged blackbirds. Also, another invasive bird is the European starling. This is also considered a concern of many farmers in the country. These are red-winged blackbirds, a common bird found throughout North America including the United States. According to the United States Fish and Wildlife Service, in a survey in 2021, the organization estimates that between 120 million and 190 million red-winged blackbirds live in the United States. The population of this bird in North America may be more than 630 million individuals. In the southern states of the United States, red-winged blackbirds usually begin nesting and breeding from early March to late April. Females usually lay three to four eggs in the time from incubation to maturity. Cities usually last about 23 days 
depending on weather conditions and the source of food they can get. The red-winged blackbird is known as a territorial bird, especially during the breeding season. If humans get too close to their nest, they will attack and defend their nest. These birds can perceive it as a threat and react aggressively. They are very sensitive to any intrusion they sense in their nesting territory. Even raptors that appear in their nesting territory will be attacked by red-winged blackbirds. They will not hesitate to attack and repel intruders. Red-winged blackbirds are considered to be fully physiologically mature when they reach 12 to 15 months of age. At this stage, the average weight of this bird is about 0.2 pounds, which is three times smaller than a pigeon. Like millions of wild parrots in Australia, red-winged blackbirds usually pose no problem to American farmers if they don't congregate in large flocks. Many even having a hobby of providing free food fees to attract these red-winged blackbirds to their garden. During the fall and winter, red-winged blackbirds often congregate in large flocks that migrate together or form large flocks. It can also take place in places where these birds find an abundant food source. The flocks of red-winged blackbirds, which can number in the thousands or even tens of thousands of birds, often have the habit of feeding in wetlands or in grain fields. Red-winged blackbirds can eat seeds planted by farmers before they have a chance to germinate or grow. In addition, this bird also often appears in the fields of wheat, sunflower, or corn to feed before harvesting. If you are a sunflower or wheat farmer on a few acres, the presence of thousands of these birds in your field can cost your crop 30 to 50 percent of its yield. Not only does it affect agriculture, but the flocks of red-winged blackbirds also affect the tens of thousands that have appeared in urban areas, causing these areas to be horribly polluted. Due to the millions of piles of trash they leave behind. In recent years, the use of nets for crop protection, or threat measures, has been commonly used by farmers in some U.S. states to deal with red-winged blackbirds. When red-winged blackbirds congregate in groups, large herds, and migrate to agricultural areas. In addition to the red-winged blackbird, the European starling is also a concern for agriculture. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, they were introduced and inhabited here. Since then, the population of this European starling has increased rapidly, and they are considered one of the most successful birds in the United States. It is estimated that there are currently 250 million European starlings in North America, and about 75% of them live in the United States. European starlings often nest and breed in areas close to human habitation. They usually live in a pair, and each year a pair of European starlings usually give birth to four to five baby starlings. Like millions of European-style red-winged blackbirds, it doesn't matter if they don't gather in large flocks. Current states such as California, Texas, Florida, and Michigan are often home to the largest populations of European starlings in the United States. These are also the states that regularly record the appearance of European starling flocks of up to millions, such as red starlings.
large flocks of European starlings also have the habit of foraging in grain and vegetable fields. In addition to this invasive behavior, the European starling also regularly feeds on farms that grow fruit trees, such as cherries, grapes, and blackberries. The biggest problem faced by European starlings is sanitation, with large amounts of their droppings contaminating fodder or water in agricultural areas. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.